last week. I started working on these drawers. I've almost finished those now. All the drawers are ready, except the last one. It's gluing up over there. Now I did mention some of the benefits of building your own kitchen and cabinets are the weight savings and material savings. Um, so normally if you were to buy a flat pack kitchen, you would have an upright like this for each two for each unit. So your drawers would have two, your kitchen your under the sink cabinet would have two. Um, because we're building this ourselves, we don't need to do that. We've already got an upright for our drawer unit. We're going to have a kitchen sink here and just a single door, uh, probably about 400 wide. Um, so all we need, we need a, piece, a bit of material here in order to hang a door. So if you have to put, try and hang a door on here, it's not going to have any room to open. So you need that, essentially a spacer. So we've cut this piece of material. And then we can mount our door to here and it has space to open. So we save weight and we save material. So that's good. So we're gonna, do, we're gonna glue and screw that on there. Um, next unit to come is gonna have the house oven with a drawer in the bottom. So we will need two uprights for that. Another drawer. This is gonna be for the oven. So we've got an oven coming in here. This is a shelf. And then below here we're gonna have a drawer below the shelf pulls out. I've just clamped these supports in because I'm going to put the shelf on now. Just glue and screw that on. Uh, I may put in some additional sort of supports below, a bit, a bit like this. But these are just temporary. I've got an oven now. It's not fixed in but I've just put it here to make sure it all fits nicely. I've got a drawer, just fitting the hinges on the, the drawer runners now. I want to talk to you about a little little tool I have. This is, I don't know what they're called, but it's essentially it's a drill bit. So what it does, if you've got a hole like I have on these drill runners and you want to get a drill, you want to centre your screw in that hole, this will help you centre. They're, they're sold, really the kind of aimed at the people fitting hinges on doors. Now if you ever fitted a hinge on a door, it's very easy for your screw to not go where you want it to go and then set the hinge, offset the hinge. Um, I've done that many times. These solve that problem and they're not just for hinges because they work really nicely on fitting these runners. Anywhere you've got a hole and you want to get the centre to start a, drill a small hole to centre your screws. These come in three sizes. I've been using the smaller one. Now, if you watched episode, I think it's episode four, I fit the locks on the cab doors of the Mini Man. And I messed about for a while getting the hole centres right. I completely forgot I had these. These would have been very helpful with that job. Um, if you're in the UK, you can buy these in Screwfix or any, most tall places will do them, but I can't think what they're called. But they are sold for, primarily sold for hinge. So if you do something like search for hinge centering tool or something like that, you'll probably find them. Today, interested to know how good the tight bond glue was. I did a few glue samples. Now this one is the melamine to the to pine, and then we got melamine to melamine. Doesn't say it's designed for melamine to melamine, but we'll thought we'll try that. So we're gonna see if we can put them apart now. It's been about 24 hours. Okay, so interesting. The melamine to melamine. It's not. It's kind of still wet. Maybe it needed longer. Put that back together and put it back in the vise and try again. We'll give it three, another three days before I touch it again. It's just, just lightly clamped. And the melamine to wood. It seems to be a much better bond, as you would expect. 
that is dry. Um, maybe a little bit still tacky, so maybe it needed longer. But certainly much stronger. Strong enough to be happy, considering that was only 24 hours. I'm going to do that test again, and this time I'm going to leave it three days and see if I can still put it apart. Okay, so back to the glue test. Now these have had three days now to cure, lightly clamped in a vice. So let's destroy them. Now in an ideal world, we'll apply a known force to these to pull them apart, and we'll know how, much, how many kilos, how many kilo it took. But I don't have the apparatus to do that. So I'm just going to smash it in a vice. Oops. So, I'm not sure if you noticed, noticed how easy that was, but that literally just pulled off. So, something went, something obviously went wrong with that. You can see the, that's the glue, it dries nice and clear. The glue is well adhered to the pine. So that's a bit of a failure, I think we need to test that again. But if you remember the first test I did, um, that was reasonable. So in conclusive, need to do that again. Now to the melamine on melamine. I'm just going to twist it in my hands. No. Get a hammer. So the glue is dry on this one. It took quite a beating to get it off. Um, obviously that, because the way I was beating it, that was testing the glue in sheer, it's sheer strength. Um, so I'm quite impressed as, considering it's not a melamine to melamine glue. But the wood one, that was a disappointment. We'll do that again and see what results we can get. As we're doing glue tests, I'm gonna do a test of the PVA wood glue. This is Gorilla Glue. It goes off quite quickly. Um, I've always been quite impressed with how good the Gorilla Glue is. It's a good smear of glue there. So this is melamine to melamine. Put it in the clamp. So with the uh, tight bond test, I'm going to try and be a bit more real world about how I apply the glue. Um, we're going to stick it onto the wood, but we're going to stick it on the edge. In the same way as I've been doing building these cabinets. So wooden edge to a melamine face. And we'll again we'll Clamp it lightly as if it's been screwed. To complete our glue tests, we're going to use again some more Gorilla, gorilla Glue. Um, testing it in the same way as we just did the tech tight bond. Real world kind of test. Now I'm going to label these so I don't forget. Time to do the final glue test. Now this is the tight bond with a wood edge onto a melamine. Um, first we can see if we can snap it with our hand. This has been two days, maybe, I think two days. Oh, that's good. Quite impressed with that. I was um, considering the surface area we're using. I think it's quite good. Okay, now we've got got Gorilla Glue. 
melamine to melamine using Gorilla Glue. It's better than I was expecting. It's probably worthwhile using if you haven't got anything else. And then we use this is the Gorilla Glue wood face to melamine face. So interestingly, with my little test results, Gorilla Glue was just as good as the tight bond in a wood to melamine glue test and it performed really well in the melamine to melamine. So maybe this isn't conclusive, maybe more tests are required before I could say you should just stick with wood gorilla glue and ignore the tight bond. Um, but I don't have time to do that, so I've got type bond, I'm going to keep using it. But I, it is questionable whether it's worthwhile using the type bond over Gorilla Glue if you don't have type bonds. So I've put the woodwork to the side for now. Um, I've done as much as I can on that. Once that's in place in the truck, and then make some decisions on other, other bits and we'll build those. So I've gone back to welding. I've just made some brackets to put the snorkel on that I made a few weeks ago and these aluminium just welded up some bits of aluminium um, bar um, now i'm going to put in some holes can of sink the screws and then we're going to paint these and go and screw to the front of the truck and we can put the snorkel Snorkel brackets have almost finished, I've just primed them, now I'm going to get on with making a bracket for the tube notcher. The tube notcher has arrived finally, it's a very heavy, nice bit of kit, but I need to make a mounting bracket for it so I can mount it to a bench. You can put in a vice. The vice is over there, they're not in an ideal position. I really want to mount this here. There's lots of room to work. TIG welded this steel up, um, it's quite a heavy bit of steel and it worked really, really really nicely actually, quite enjoyed doing this steel. So that's now ready to bolt to this and then we can clamp it down to the bench. is now ready for use so I made this just made this bracket up bolted it to here and now I can use a couple of G clamps to mount this on a table just done a test cut um, it cuts really beautifully it's solid nothing moves when you're cutting this vice is brilliant um, it's very heavy you can see the size of this steel it really is chunky but it just it's just a really nice bit of machinery it works really well smooth, solid, you can clamp clamps really really well. It's just a really nice bit of kit.
tomorrow I'm going to switch back to the roof rack be nice to get that done thanks for watching guys hopefully we'll have, we'll have the roof rack finished for next week and we'll get it fitted probably then put, put to one side for painting don't forget to subscribe and like any questions add them below in the comments I'll answer all questions and I'll see you next week